It is a big pleasure of mine to introduce this year's guest of honor, Mr. Faraji Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad is a non-profit professional and media personality from Baltimore, Maryland. In 1999, Mr. Muhammad co-founded the New Leadership Learning Center Incorporated at the age of 19 years old. He has centered his missions and initiatives around redefining leadership for a generation and is a voice for the youth, advocate for our concerns, and an example of a respected leader of Baltimore and a community servant. Please welcome Mr. Faraji Muhammad. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, congratulations to the class of 2019. Woo! I would like to first and foremost thank uh, the wonderful staff of Lakeland Elementary Middle School. I want to thank Ms. Garcia and her team and the staff. I want to thank my friend Jimmy from the Curators of Hip Hop. But most importantly, I want to thank each and every one of you as we come out here today to celebrate, to honor, to show our love and respect for the next generation of young leaders. Amen. I am uh, very humbled to stand before you. And anytime I have an opportunity to stand before young people, I do my work on radio and on television. So I don't see my audience. I just hope and pray that the words that I share makes an impact. But to see your faces, to see your spirit, to, to feel your spirit, to, to see the excitement, and most importantly, to see how beautiful you really are. It is an honor and a joy and a privilege to stand before you this morning. I just want to share just a few remarks that I think that you should consider as you move into your next chapter of your life. I have a six-year-old son. He just, his birthday is today, actually. Yeah. You wouldn't say that if you saw him. He would tear out of place. But yesterday, we had a birthday party for him. And you ever had one of those parties where, you know, and you reflect on your childhood, and maybe to some of the young, young leaders that we have here today, that one year, you remember, that was the best birthday party I ever had. No, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a great party. But when I was spending time with him yesterday, I was thinking of you. Because as he's six, I was like, oh my goodness. And I'm seeing the scholars here. I'm thinking to myself, my son is going to be at this point where he's going to graduate. You're moving on from eighth grade and then to 12th grade and all of those things. And it brought a certain level of joy. But it also brought within me a certain responsibility as his father. And the message I want to share with you comes out of um, remarks that the Honorable Dr. Martin Luther King once asked a question to a group of young people just like you. He asked the question, what's in your life's blueprint? What's in your life's blueprint? Now, I'm going to just say this. When I was your age, Life wasn't what it is right now. Amen. If you ask any of your parents, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, this is a whole different life right now for you as the next generation. Yes, it is. Yes. And so when I was growing up, things were a little bit simpler. We didn't have technology that is so major and so big. We didn't have Facebook. Can you imagine <laughs> not being able to? The phones that we used to have, they actually flipped. <laughs> we actually had a phone in the house yeah. that rang, and then you pick it up. Amen. Had the long cord. Yeah. 
My mother had a phone right next to her bed with an answer machine. Yeah. Which were, thank you for calling. <laughs> we don't have that anymore. Life has changed. So when I asked that question, when Dr. King posed that question, I said, man, that's a powerful question because he asked, what is in your life's blueprint? And blueprint is simply a guide on what a, a guide that an architect uses to build something. So I'm going to pose that to you, young nation. What are you building right now? Are you building your bank account? Are you building a resume? Or are you building your feeds on your social media? What are you building right now? Or are you trying to be the best person? Are you building your character? Are you building your love for your community? Are you building your love for other people? What are you building right now? What's in your life's blueprint? Now when we think about that, I want you to keep that in mind, because Dr. King said that there should be three things that you should consider when building your life's blueprint. I just want to go over them very quickly. He said the first thing is to have a deep belief in your own dignity and in your own worth. Uh -huh. Woo. Mm -hmm. Now he said this back in the 60s. Mm. But do you know that even as, as we have so much technology, we have all of these great advancements, we have come so far, yet people like you young people have less self -esteem, lower self-esteem. Mm. Yes. Do you know that so many young people suffer yes. from having a negative body image? Mm -hmm. So many young people just like you suffer because you, when you speak, people laugh when you speak. Or they don't think that you are clear. They don't, or or that you may not wear the latest clothes. So they think, oh, you ain't nothing. Amen. Or they might look at you and say, well, your parents are not from America, or you not this, or you not that. <clears throat> See, this has all to this impacts who you are and how you see yourself. So when I talk to young people, I ask the number one question, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as the realist N-word? I've heard this language before. Young ladies, do you say, girl? I'm the baddest B-word. Say confessions. <laughs> but do you say that to yourself? You get on your, you get on Instagram, Snapchat, and you just be like, "Eh, eh, eh." God, you made me so good. <laughs> Somebodyness simply means that you have to see yourself as being worthy and valuable. But that's not dependent upon how other people see you. Your somebodyness is not something that you can get from Instagram. Your somebodyness is not what you can get from listening to a certain type of music. Your somebodyness comes from who you are deep inside and comes from the experiences that you had. But most importantly, it comes from the love that you have for yourself. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you love yourself to see yourself as being valuable enough? Do you know what happened down at the Inner Harbor a couple of weekends ago? Yes. 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 Do you know that there is a city 
in Baltimore, and I talk about this all the time on my radio show, in the city of Baltimore, guess what they're talking about the most? Mm. You? You. Yeah. you. All of you young people right here. Soon as you walk out the door, young men, when y'all walk out the door with your homeboys, you may not be doing anything. That's the truth. But guess what? Old women walk across the hall, clenches their purse a little bit closer. Yeah. Young ladies, they don't know how you gonna come. You might say hi, or you might hit somebody in the mouth. <laughs> They don't know how to handle you when you're out in the street. Amen. So when we heard about the situation down in the Inner Harbor, they said a bunch of teenagers was running wild and rampant. Yep. Teenagers running on cars, hitting people. Yep. See, they're creating a characterization of the next generation. We talk about young people are the future, True. but the future, according to their standards, look very bleak. Yes, How do you see yourself? So when we talk about, well, what is it that you got to offer? What is your somebody that's really rooted in? And that's why I love how Dr. King said that. He said, don't ever let anyone make you feel less than because of who you are, where you from. Yes. Let me tell you something. You might feel like, man, my parents and this and all of that. And I want to be very clear. How many parents do we have in the audience? Just raise your hand. Look at all these parents. Let me tell you something. Yeah, let's give a big shout out to the parents. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. As a parent, when my son does some things that I don't like, that's a hard thing to accept as a parent, yeah. especially when you try to teach your children right. That's right. And when I often tell people, you know, we, you know, some people that don't understand the struggle of being a parent, they say some crazy things like, well, we need to check the parents. Mm -hmm. Young people hitting and running and acting wild, what's wrong with the parent? I don't think any one of us of good conscience Teach our children That's to right. be a hell in the That's world. Right. Sure. Sure. We don't right. teach you. You don't go up there and be like, "Hey, baby, now I want you to kick everybody up, and I want you to just be a menace to society." <laughs> <laughs> and when you go out to the world, curse that adults. <laughs> no parents ever say that to you. Your parents and my parents—they've tried the best to offer you the best. That's now. Right. You can't use that excuse to say, I didn't know. All right. Do you know that a baby knows the difference between right and wrong That's from the time it. that they are small? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you ain't just babies no more. You about to go into high school. Amen. So if you do some crazy stuff, you got to take responsibility right. for yeah. your own actions. That's, right. That's what it means to grow up. You said Farage, I ain't came to hear that, man. Tell it. Tell it. I'm trying to get you prepared for high school because guess what? You're going to come up against some situations yes. that you're going to have to rely on your somebody -ness. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, your mother, your father, your auntie, your uncle, your granddad, grandpa, grandma, they're not going to be around when your homeboy, hey, yo, check this out, yo, you want to cut school, you don't have time with you. Uh -huh. So you got to have something in you to be like, don't have time, man, man, it's 10 o'clock. No, I ain't going downtown, man. That's right. I'm going, to, I'm going to school, man. I'll check y'all later, man. That's if I right. even see y'all around, I'll check you later. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. The second thing Dr. King said is that he said that you must have the determination to achieve excellence. Amen. We talk about the great success of a Jay-Z who becomes a billionaire, hmm. the great success of a Beyonce, or the great success of any entertainer or person that you look up to. Hmm. But guess what? They put in time yes, that's right. to get to that point. Because they refuse to be mediocre they said that everything they do, they require excellence. 
That's right. I read an article the other day about a man by the name of Nicky Barnes. Anybody familiar with Nicky Barnes? Yes. yes. Some yes. of the older folks probably remember from Nicky Barnes. Yes. New York Times ran an article about Nicky Barnes. And in that piece, they talked about how Nicky Barnes was great. I'm a t <laughs> he was great, all right. He was great. Nicky Barnes was a man who died back in 2012. They said he was a possibly 78 or 79 years old. If you don't know the story of Nicky Barnes, I'm going to give it to you very quickly. He was a big man in Harlem, New York City. He owned as many as 200 suits, 100 pairs of custom-made shoes, 50 full-length leather coats. Imagine that 50 full-length leather coat. A fleet of luxury cars. They ain't say one or two, a fleet. That's like 20 of them joined. Multiple homes and apartments financed by the fortune he had amassed in the late 1960s and 1970s. And do you know how he got his fortune? He was great. He got his fortune by saturating black neighborhoods with heroin. Nicky Barnes was a drug dealer. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. He was great as a drug dealer. So and when we talk about being excellent, we're not talking about you got to have a blueprint on what your excellence looks like. And more importantly, you got to be very thing. See, the thing about life is life gives you what you ask for. Uh -huh. That's I want you to always remember that, young nation. Life will give you exactly what you ask for. You don't, if you don't ask for nothing, it will give you just that. If you don't work for nothing, it will give you that in return. He worked, but somewhere along the line, he got so caught up. His blueprint was to be great in the wrong way. I don't want you to be great in that way. I want you to be great in a positive way, in the right way. So when you go to high school, I want you to be excellent as being a high schooler. I want you to go to all of these wonderful new schools that you go into. You, right now, you're at the top of your game. You can walk through Lakeland. You can be like, what's up, Ms. Garcia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jimmy, what's up? What's up? It's cool. What's good? What's good, man? Go to class. Chop. Oh, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> huh? But when you go up to Poly, you go up to Weston, you gotta humble yourself. Yes. yes. That's the way life goes. It's up and down. You can't be the big man, the big woman on campus everywhere you go. So you gotta humble yourself. Yes. That's the way it is, right? That's your family. So when you go up there, you humble yourself because now you are a student again. And I want you to be a student of excellence, a student of greatness. So when you go up there, they be like, man, who is that little, who is that? So you, you're just going to class, keeping your head down, hanging out with the right people. Let me make this very quick. Yes, right. Your greatness will be determined by the people you hang out That's with. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. If you hanging out with some knuckleheads, you gonna get it. You gonna end up being a knucklehead. Yes. How you gonna hang out with some knuckleheads and you a scholar? Amen. That ain't gonna happen. Yes. Peer pressure is real. Yes. Yes. You know it and I know. Even when you get in the door, peer pressure is real. Yes. So you can't be like, well, they just my home girls. You know, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I had some homeboys I had to distance myself from. It's all good. And they told me, as they see us from years later, man, what's up, man? It's good to see you still trying to do the right thing. That's fine. 
But you don't be so in love with a person in their destructive ways at the expense of your own greatness. That's yes. Right. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You ride with a person all the way till the wheels fall off and the engine falls out. Right. <laughs> At the expense of your own greatness. Yeah. Dr. King said this as we close. He said that the doors of opportunity. Mm, mm. I want to hear, I want you to hear this real quick. He said that the doors of opportunity are opening. But your greatest challenge is to enter these doors as they open. Yes. You have opportunities that's being afforded to you right now, young nation. True. And as they're opening up, I want you to take advantage of every opportunity that is good to help you. And watch how your star rise. Watch how the little light that you have inside starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that way when they see you, they walk you walk into a room full of adults and students. They be like, there she is. There she is. So the door of opportunity, I've been afforded so many opportunities. I am not a self-made man. I come on, I stand on the shoulders of those before me and I represent those behind me. Let me tell you something. I don't I don't take that for a joke. When I come on the radio every night, I say a prayer. I don't take that for a joke because you're speaking to people who are looking for the next generation to say something of good. You're speaking to a group of people that are hoping in you. I'm a hip hop artist. I ain't put that in my uh. I ain't put no. I ain't put that. I ain't put that. What y'all laughing at me for? I can rap. So check this out. I, I did part of my song. I got this song called Wins out right now. Okay. Wins. W I N S. And the, uh, the the whole thing about the idea behind Wins is that I say that in Baltimore we're taking too many losses. Amen. So I say now. It's all about the what? It's got to be about the win. Because we've taken so many losses that we gotten to the point that, that we lose sight that at the end of the day, it's got to be about the win. So I wrote, take your wins with your losses. That's like your rims with your crosses. Both got to take the pressure of being good or even better. Yeah. My people don't measure up to the standard of the civilized in the eyes of the planet. We defy logic, survive what they planted, still produce giants so they don't understand it. That it's in the blood too often that we spill at the hands of each other in order to keep it real. That's a loss we can't afford. That's right. That's why the hood is so poor. Yes. That's why this can't be ignored. Cause hope that we got the best. Excuse me. They all the radio. Cause the hope we got in store is fresh off the shelves. We can wait for us or just lose ourselves. Yeah. So I gotta put in work. Yeah. To make this stuff work. Right. Fill up my future from the dirt yes. before I'm down in the dirt. Yes. Then I say it's nothing about this. It's only it's only about the win. That's right. So my last thing to you, as Dr. King said, I mean Dr. King said, he said that you must have a heart and a spirit for justice, beauty, and love. True. To my family that are a part of the immigrant, the immigrant community, there is a real attack on your humanity right now. They are looking at the DREAM Act and they're scrutinizing the DREAM Act and they're trying to determine that the next generation of those who have made their way across the waters are whether they should be eligible for citizenship right now. 
See, those families that have made their way came in hopes of better opportunity, came in hopes for better education, came out of war-torn uh, situations, but most importantly, they came because they had a love for their children to make a better life for them. As black people and as brown people and white people and yellow people, we have to understand, understand the struggle for us to become better human beings. But you gotta have a heart for that. Don't yeah. get into the of mindset, young people, of thinking, oh man, they ain't part of our community. No, they are a part of our community. Yes, they are. Amen. We are all one nation right now. And at the end of the day, if we don't see the humanity of one another, yeah. if you don't see just because my color is different or my language is different or my background is different, but guess what? We're still human beings. Amen. Yeah. So you've got to have a heart, a mind, and a spirit to want to serve your community. I saw that the, the Lakeland, uh, uh, the Pride, those who have gotten the Pride, awards because they were able to exemplify as part of themselves to their classmates. Imagine if you did that in your neighborhood. Imagine if you do that in your church. Wherever you go, you represent that level of pride for yourself. Not just for Lakeland, but for whatever community, whatever block you represent, you represent that love for yourself. So I thank you so much for your time. I thank you so much yeah. for the opportunity. Yeah. And congratulations.